Hey, it's Andrew Bocher with UI6 Outdoors. In today's video, we've got the full review of the iCamper X Cover. All right, so this is the X cover from iCamper. This is the first ever coverless rooftop tent. What I mean by that is all other soft shell rooftop tents have a cover. You gotta put it on and take it off when you open up or collapse your tent. And that means you have something else to store. You gotta put it in the back of your truck, back of your vehicle, and sometimes it's covered in dirt or water and you're gonna have to stuff it into your vehicle with things you may not wanna have the elements on. With this, you have a skirting. Now around this skirting, you have a zipper on along the bottom that starts in the front or in most people's cases, the back, I have mounted this reversed because I wanted the tent to unfold on the driver's side of my vehicle. Because I have it on my camper shell, I can do that. It works perfectly. And inside this camper shell, this is the ARE HD version. So we have an internal uh, skeleton that allows for more ability to hold weight on top of this thing. So I don't have to worry at all about this. Even a normal camper shell should be just fine to hold a couple people in this tent. Putting this thing on was absolutely simple. The entire tent itself is only 104 pounds. For people who can't lift 104 pounds with ease, definitely have someone else to help you. But if you're able to lift that, it is quite simple to do yourself. Attachment points for this tent are stupid simple. There are eight nuts, there are eight screws, and there are eight base plates. Now you put them accordingly and you slide them into the sliding rail system of the X cover. You bolt down the nuts until that bottom base plate starts to bend just slightly and that means you have it torqued just right. You make sure to do that evenly on all four corners and you're good to go. I've only had this for about a month or so, so over time issues may arise and show their ugly face, but we will see and maybe a follow-up video down the road is something I need to do for a, you know, one year review of how it's still doing. We'll never know, but for right now, as it sits, I'll show you more of the details. So coverless rooftop tent, you don't have to worry about it. You have a skirt system that goes all the way around it and you have a zipper that starts from, in this case, like I said, the front, but usually it's on the back. So you have a little bit easier access to the attachment point. It's not so cumbersome. And on top of this, because this is a hard aluminum honeycomb design, you have roof racks and you can put damn near any roof rack accessory on top of this tent. So you don't lose the actual roof aspect of your vehicle. You can actually add your bikes, your kayaks, your skis, your snowboards. But when you unfold it, you obviously should take those things off first because you don't want to unfold it and have all your crap hanging down here or fall off. Um, you can leave the mounts most likely on, but the items themselves, it's best to take them off. So that being said, let's unfold this and show you how fast and simple this is to get set up. Just like that, your tent is ready to rock and roll. All you have to do is take the incorporated ladder that's inside, undo the Velcro, and attach it. These little rods right here open straight up, pull them out, attach it in the eyelet, and then let the ladder drop straight down. Make sure to find a good spot for it. There you go. And make sure all of the locking points for the ladder are in place. So when you first climb into this tent, you'll see that the base is showing on the bottom and you have your two mattresses. Obviously one is right here and one is underneath in this position already. This is two and a half inches of memory foam mattress. You just grab one mattress and pull it over to this side. Just like that. Man, this is insane. Usually I have a little bit of a bow or a wiggle when I get into a rooftop tent being 225 plus pounds, depending upon how many donuts I've had that week. Um, I usually feel a bit of a bow, but this speaks volumes for that honeycomb aluminum base that this tent has. I don't feel any motion and I'm properly grounded with my ladder. So inside the tent, you have these rods. Now there are four longer rods and there are four smaller rods. The four smaller rods go on the side awnings for the side windows. The four longer rods go on the front and back awning for the tent itself. So find the longer rods. And on these rods, you'll see that one side has a hook and one side has a slight bow. That slight bow goes into the base of the tent. Now this little flap here, you wanna make sure this is down. 
This is the skirting that goes around your tent when it's locked up. Just like that. Get it there, there you go. And you wanna do that because you don't want it catching water, especially, I mean, if it's not raining, you don't really have to worry about it. You can keep it up, but it's good practice to push it down because if it's up and it rains, the water's gonna come off the rain fly and pool up into that. And it can make a mess, especially if it starts to drain out on your stuff on the ground. So push it down, that way it all naturally drains off. And keep in mind, water's gonna drain off of this. So anything below it, make sure to keep it clear or covered. Now, when it's down, you will see that there are holes right about here and right about here. And those holes are meant for the rods. Like I said, you have a hook and a slight bend. That hook, you wanna face it slightly down, and the bend, you wanna face it in, and there's that hole. Now, take the rod and put it through the tent material and into this hole right here on the frame of the tent. And you wanna do that because this holds the tent material down, and once again, allows water to shut off naturally. Now, once you have that up, you bring your awning, and on your awning, you have these little eyelet sections on the side. They're little uh, nylon uh, kind of I don't know, hook holes. Uh, they don't have these little eyelets. And on the back side, you have little uh, material pockets that you snap them in. They don't have these gold eyelets all the way around. You just hook that hook in there. Boom. Like that. Making sure the hook is down. And the more you do this, the faster it gets. I'm obviously talking about it. It's very simple to do. It's very simple learning curve. Bend this up, put it into this eyelet, and you're good to go for your front awning. Now, you don't have to put the other ones up. You do not have to have the windows open. You don't have to have the back open. So technically, you don't even have to have this up. You can just climb on in, batten down the hatches, and get some sleep. If you see around the front side of this tent, we have a zipper. Now, this zipper is for their eye camper annex room. Now the annex room, I have it. It's phenomenal. It is absolutely a must have because it turns your rooftop tent into a perfect camping spot. If you're planning on camping for a few days or more, the annex room is a huge addition because you're getting this giant living room section that zips onto this and then guy lines out and stakes to the ground with tent poles and you're set up with this living room that you can put a small couch in, a bunch of other cots. So if you had some friends that wanted to sleep out with you guys as well, you can put down cots inside the annex room, put a little, maybe a wood-burning stove if you wanted to tap a, a stove pipe through the top of that thing or even just a little portable heater. It would be fantastic. And that heat would come up through the annex room into the tent and keep you even warmer uh, if you wanted to go that route. But that's for another video. So if you want me to do that video, let me know in the comment section of this video that you want me to do in addition. If I've already done that video, the link will be right here to click or click the link in the description of the video and it'll take you to that to show you the iCamper X Cover Annex Room Edition and how that sets up. But for right now, it's mainly about the tent. You have little straps here, little buckles on the front of the awning that you can attach and then tighten up to make it a little bit more taut. And that allows you to make this a little bit more rigid. This is a little loose, I probably could tighten it up a bit, but for right now it's fine. Let's open up those windows and show you what it looks like fully assembled with all the awning sticking out. There you go. You have the full tent set up. This is what it looks like. This is fully assembled with the rain fly and all the awnings open. Now, as far as the canvas and the material itself being used on this tent, we talked about the base material, which is that honeycomb aluminum, but we also need to talk about the material on the tent itself. The tent material, not the rain fly, but the tent material is a poly cotton canvas rated at 300 GSM, which is very durable and meant for long-term use in the elements. Now the rain fly, which is the exterior part outside of the main tent material, and it is polyester at a rating of 150 D. Now that's a very high quality, good thick water resistant material, and it's rated at a polyurethane or PU rating of 3000, which if you look in to the details yourself, you'll find as you compare them to other tents, you'll see that the materials used on this tent are for long-term use and for rugged use. And hopefully we'll see, as long as no problems raise their ugly face in the future of using this, should be very durable. For me, ugh, being in this tent, I'm six foot three, 225 pounds, 230 pounds, 
feels very stable. Obviously the rock of the vehicle, you can feel that if you rock hard enough, depends upon what vehicle you're putting it on. Uh, but also being in here, being laid out, I mean, I am facing diagonal in the tent right now, fully laying down and I still have room about foot and a half before I hit the other side of the tent, even with the top of my toes, which is usually something that hits pretty fast. Arm is fully extended and I still have another foot and a half, two feet before I hit that side of the tent. So you can have easily three full grown people in here, um, two full grown with some kids, definitely. It's got that king size nest bed size to it, which it doesn't seem like it would. When you see it from the outside, you're like, eh, it's gonna be kind of tight but it expands quite well. There's a lot of room in here. There's two and a half inches of memory foam mattress that's built into the tent that you don't have to worry about bringing. You can also replace the mattresses if you need to with new memory foam from iCamper if you know down the road it gets a little bit soft. I'm not sure how it's gonna be. That's the longevity thing that we might have to do a follow-up video on, how this does after a year or two years, and then follow up with what I think of it then. Because as it sits, a lot of things when you first buy them or first get them, you're gonna like it because it's working perfectly. But over time, over the years of using it, wear and tear, especially something that's on your vehicle quite often, unless you remove it every season, it's gonna get a beaten. So we'll see what happens to this tent in the long term. There's a few things in my mind that I'm kind of worried about. Uh, one of them is overall longevity for wear and tear with weather. So when it's on your vehicle, I'm not planning on taking this on and off very often. So over the years, how much will that degrade the protective nature of the tent and how will it open up and continue to perform properly after you know hundreds of times of opening it. Another thing that worries me is not if, but when the tent gets wet and you're in very cold conditions like I'm in quite often, when you close it back up being wet, you can't clean off all the water and you seal it back up and you're in below freezing temperatures. When that tent and the poles and all the material on the outside freezes, how will it open again? You know, How is it gonna perform with that? Now, I've been in sub, freezing temperatures for the last couple weeks now. I've had this tent open and closed with a little bit of water on it and there's been no issues whatsoever. Uh, but if it's really drenched and saturated for a long weekend in the weather and then it freezes solid while it's in the closed position, how is it gonna perform opening back up? That's kind of one of those things I'll have to do a follow-up video for. If you guys want me to, let me know in the comments section. I can do like a year down the road or two years down the road and let you know how it's doing because that is a huge part about a review of a tent is how will it perform over the years? So. It's a tough one, but another thing that bugs me is, and worries me, is how annoying the wind gets with this tent. Uh, a lot of tents are very noisy when the wind blows. Don't get me wrong, it's not just this tent alone where it only, it makes that sound and oh man, it's this tent. No, countless tents do it, almost all tents do it. There's never been a tent that's not annoying somewhat in the wind. So, um, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm weary about how bad it will be because I've been in this a few times already. I've already used it a few times and there's been some slight breezes, but today there's been some pretty good gusts and the wind on this tent is quite loud and it does shake. And so I'm worried about the poles, the little rods that hook in with just a hook that aren't locked in, but just hook in to the eyelets. If the wind blows it hard enough, will they come undone and be an issue with that? So I don't know, we'll see. One of the last things that's been kind of on my mind of what could be an issue is the zipper. Because this is a coverless rooftop tent, if that zipper ever fails that's holding the tent uh, shut, <laughs> you might be up that creek without that paddle. With a locking mechanism like the previous versions of iCamper's rooftop tents, the SkyCamp, it's a hard shell lock. So that lock, you'll be able to see if it's starting to get a little messed up or not. But with the zipper, sometimes the zipper just goes to hell out of nowhere. Now, so far what I've seen, these zippers are phenomenal on this tent. All the zippers on this tent, they're just insane. There's not like a snagging point on these. I do like the fact that the windows, when you zip them up, you can have the uh, mosquito netting up by itself and have air coming through to see through when your awnings are up or zipping the weatherproof plastic see-through section up uh, if the weather gets bad while still keeping your view. So it keeps you warmer, eliminates that breeze, but you can still have a view. You don't feel like you're claustrophobic, which I hate in a tent. Uh, so I'll most likely be in here more often because I have more natural light, more viewing, uh, more ability to relax and enjoy God's canvas when I'm inside my tent. Most tents, you, there's some that are hit and miss because you, you just either have 
no insulation and you're freezing to death, <laughs> maybe all you have is mosquito netting to see the outside, or you have to seal it up completely and you're in like a tomb. And I can't stand that feeling. So having this option is nice. You see right out the front window and right now my view of this canyon is beautiful. And attach. This will give you pockets that you can put accessories in, things you may use in the morning, things you may use at night. If it is a windy environment, I recommend that you take a guy line, attach it to the bottom handle, and stake it to the ground. That way it's nice and stable and doesn't flop back and forth. Definitely a handy addition to your rooftop tent to give you access to things while you're coming and going from your tent. So I hope you appreciate the video. I hope you enjoyed watching the first ever full review of the X cover from iCamper. Go check them out. Links in the description of the video. If you're looking for a rooftop tent, they're all in that expensive category. So don't be shocked when you're seeing a high value of this tent. There's a lot that goes into it. Trust me, you want it to. You don't want these tents to go wrong. Don't go cheap on a rooftop tent. It's an investment. It's not the same cost as a tent that you can just fold out on the ground. It's a completely different animal, so keep that in mind. It's not cheap by any means. Thank you so much to my fan supporters. The financial support my fans give helps a ton. GY6 Outdoors is completely fan funded, and the help that you guys give through the link in the description of this video at our fan supporting site helps tremendously. The more fans we have on board that donate a dollar every month or more, depending upon what you can do, helps us do more of these videos in a much more deep way. I don't want to cut corners. I want to keep quality high. I want to keep entertainment high. I want you guys to have fun while watching my videos. Everyone's time is worth money. Everyone's time is important. I don't want to put out cheap, crappy videos because I don't want to waste your time. Thanks a lot, guys, for watching. This is Andrew Boach with GY6 Outdoors. I'll see you next time.